In this layout series, we've talked a lot about common initiation devices. Pull stations, smoke detectors, heat detectors, duct detectors, carbon monoxide detectors. There are others too, which are just less common. There's flame detectors, video detection, beam detectors. There's also specialized systems like very early smoke detection apparatus, or VESDA as one brand name in that space. We'll get into each of these perhaps less common devices later on. Today, we're gonna round out the initiation side of fire alarm layouts with our last common device. That is the module. In a fire alarm system, a module is a device that performs a specific function for the fire alarm system. They can be used to monitor something or interact with something. We have a few ways we could describe modules, but to keep things simple, we're gonna to refer to the different types as monitor modules, control modules, and relay modules. Monitor, control, and relay modules allow us to do things in the fire alarm world. Up until now, we essentially have had the input side of the system, which we term the initiation devices, and we have the output side of the system, which is the notification appliances. The inputs like pull stations, detectors, these are just waiting for a change to happen to alert the panel. The notification appliances like strobes and horns, well, they're just waiting for the panel to go into alarm so that they can alert occupants. That's all we really can do with what we've described thus far. Sure, the panel can warn the fire department or call a supervising station. Yes, we can do voice announcements and accept incoming mass notification signals, but our fire alarm systems are limited in what they can do and what they can monitor until we introduce these modules that we're talking about today. Monitor modules, control modules, and relay modules allow us to interact with an unlimited assortment of different systems and devices. Because of modules, we're able to monitor or control other devices or systems that are not directly a part of our fire alarm system. Let's look at a common example. A tamper switch on a fire sprinkler system is designed to detect any unauthorized tampering or damage to the sprinkler system. A monitor module in a fire alarm system supervises this tamper switch by monitoring its status and providing an alert to the fire alarm control panel if the switch is activated. Basically, the monitor module is connected to the tamper switch via wiring and can detect any changes to the switch's status. If someone were to tamper with the sprinkler system or damage it, the tamper switch would activate and send a signal to the monitor module. The monitor module would then alert the fire alarm control panel that there may be an issue with the sprinkler system. This is usually reported to the panel as a supervisory condition. The horns and strobes don't activate, but there's a buzzing sound at the panel and the panel will report out to its supervising station that there's a supervisory condition. The monitor module also checks for integrity. It supervises the continuity of the wiring. If there's a problem with the wiring or the tamper switch circuit, the monitor module will detect it and send an alert to the fire alarm control panel, essentially saying that something is compromised. The monitor module here helps keep the sprinkler system active by actually alerting someone if the system is out of service. So a monitor module, or sometimes called an input monitor module, is a device that hardwires to something else and is monitoring for a change in state. If it gets a change in state, then it transmits a signal back to the fire alarm control unit that the unit understands. So then what is a control module? Control modules are responsible for managing components that actively do something, like for example with elevators. Control modules have an output that comes out of the module and they handle tasks such as battery lowering indication and primary recall, as well as visual indicators for firefighter hats. On the other hand, relay modules have a switch that transfers based on input. It's just a dry contact output. Is it normally open? Then when a change happens, it closes. Is it normally closed? Then the opposite. When a change happens, it opens. Relay modules are really only used for switching and again are associated with shutdowns. Think air handlers and dampers where power is simply cut to that other unit or damper. How does a dry contact work? A dry contact relay is a type of relay that uses a set of contacts to control an external circuit. It's called dry because the contacts don't carry any current on their own. They simply provide a connection between two points in the circuit. Here's how it works. When an electrical signal is sent to the relay coil, it generates a magnetic field that causes the contacts to move from their normally open position to a closed position. This allows current to flow through the circuit, activating whatever device is connected to that circuit. The dry contact relay is commonly used in a variety of applications, including fire alarm systems, HVAC systems, and lighting control systems. One of the advantages of using a dry contact relay is that it provides electrical isolation between the control circuit and the external circuit, which can help prevent electrical interference and other issues. So when are all these modules used? Let's take a look at this. Examples of monitor modules would include sprinkler system supervision, clean agent system supervision, fire pump supervision, kitchen hood suppression system supervision, stair pressurization system supervision, gas detection supervision, carbon monoxide detection supervision, monitoring a third party device or system that doesn't integrate directly with a fire alarm, and notification appliance power extender supervision. 
Control module applications include elevator battery lowering indication, alternate recall primary recall control, firefighter hat light control, audio amplifier control, smoke control system activation, horn strobe and bell control, fire suppression system releasing service. Relay module applications include air handling unit shutdown, smoke and fire smoke damper actuation, door hold release, elevator shunt, public address system shutdown, auto fry shutdown like in a movie theater popcorn fryer, gas shut off, activating notification appliance circuits, interface with other building systems, and high speed fan shutdown. What are the rules for locating modules? Modules are typically placed adjacent to or within the enclosure of the equipment they are connected to. There are some specific rules, such as emergency control function interface devices, which are required to be within three feet of the component controlling the emergency control function, unless it's a Class D circuit. More on circuit styles in future videos. Otherwise, whether it's a relay module, control module, or a monitor module, they are typically mounted in a 4S back box and have a clear plastic cover with the LED in the middle. If the LED is solid red, that means there's been an activation of the module and you should have an audible indication at the fire alarm control unit that the system is off normal. If it's green, that's normal. In this segment, we've talked briefly about modules. Next, we'll do an exercise covering what we've learned here and then close out the series on initiation side of fire alarm layout. I hope you found this material helpful and engaging. The next series will cover layout for notification appliance side of the fire alarm systems. We'll explore different requirements and different appliances and work through exercises as well. Modules are what makes a fire alarm system come to life as they provide both input and outputs to the control equipment. Think of them as keys to your vehicle. You're either turning something on or off. Let's go for a ride. Until next time, I'm Al Yakel and this is Meyer Fire University. This has been a preview of Meyer Fire University. Join the next generation of fire protection experts at www.meyerfireuniversity.com.